Okay. So in this video is going to be super boring unless you are interested in pH meters. Um, why pH meters are important, um, or at least as far as brewing. The two main reasons that at least, at least that I use mine is for measuring for measuring uh, pH of your mash, which we all know should be around 5.2. Um, there's a lot more people that know more about that than me, but so measuring mash, and the second reason would be for measuring uh, sour beer. And in this case, I'm going to be measuring. I have not measured this yet, but um, I'm going to be measuring a quick sour beer that I'm um, that I'm uh, trying to create. I guess you could say. I don't know how it's going to work, but uh, I have a beer, five gallons of beer that has no hops, no yeast. All it has in it right now is Lactobacillus plantarum. And so it's been in there for actually not that long, probably eight hours, no, six hours, seven hours. So it's pretty early on, but we're going to measure it anyways to see what's going on with it. So um, this is the meter that I have. It's a pH meter by Milwaukee. It's uh, model 102. Um, it's a pretty good mid-level um, to advanced for home brewing uh, type meter. It has a, uh, a thermometer which is this black skinny one and then it has the um, the probe, the measuring probe right here. So uh, I usually like to store my probe in, I used to store it in a a storage solution and I don't know if this is correct the correct way to do it I don't know but I would fill up this little case with storage solution I would jam this bad boy into it and I would try to like this thing kind of like floats up so I would try to seal it in there but uh, you know a month or two later I would bring it out and it would just be full of like crystals like this right here I don't know if you guys can see this this is like leftover crystals and it like gets real crystally. So I don't do that anymore just because it doesn't stay wet in here, but I usually just store it in there dry. So that might be the wrong way to do it. But so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. So what we have here is tap water and this is distilled water. So Without doing anything to the meter, um, I have uh, calibrated this not too long ago, like 20 minutes ago. So I assume it's going to be pretty close. So it's saying that my tap water is 6.54 pH. So let's see what tap, let's see what RO water is, reverse osmosis, or distilled water, I'm sorry. So it's saying that distilled is, it's going up to 7 point, well, it's kind of going down now, but it's saying 7.3, 7.28, you basically, I'm not going to wait for it to finish, but there's a little, at least on my meter, there's a little tiny hourglass right here and that kind of tells you when it's when you can kind of take the when it's done reading it when it's done kind of fluctuating for the most part okay so we're not gonna wait around forever so every time you use this um, you have to basically calibrate it which is what I'm gonna go over and why that's important well your pH meter, unless you use are using it daily, and even if you're using it daily, I think you still need to calibrate it. But for home brewing purposes, it's going to be within days and probably weeks before you use it. So, so anyways, let's go to so to calibrate it. We have two different types of solutions. We have 7.0, and we have 4.01 solution. So, 
if you are to measure anything beneath 7.0, which is everything, as far as I know, as far as beer brewing, you need 7.0 and 4.0. If you're measuring pH above 7.0, you have to get pH 10.0 solution to do the uh, correct reading. Okay. So, yeah, just to clarify, if you're going to be brewing beer, you need 4 and 7. That's it. You don't need the 10.0 solution. So, what we're going to do is hit calibrate. So, it starts blinking 7.01. So, I like to kind of shake it off, make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And now we just kind of put it in the 7.01 solution. And we will take a quick break and come back with Okay, we're back. So, the hourglass has stopped flashing. So that means that it has calibrated itself to, to this solution as 7.01. So, hit confirm that this is correct. And so now it starts flashing 4.01. So I'll rinse this out in a little distilled water or tap water, which is I've always used. And we'll throw it in some 4.0 solution. So again, this takes about a minute and a half. So I'm going to cut okay. the video. So about a minute and a half has gone by. And the hourglass has stopped flashing, so I have 4.01. So it's saying that it's, cal it's calibrated itself to 4.0. Uh, the 4 pH solution. We'll hit confirm one more time. It stops flashing. Now we're calibrated. So as you can see, it just went to 3.99. Uh, that's because, you know, 3.98. That's because this is a $100 pH meter. This is, you know, tens, hundredths. So it's still within really, really close. As far as brewing is concerned, we're, we're still really ballpark. Um, you know, 3.96. So we're still super, 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 super close. And to prove that, I'm going to move this over to the seven solution. Let's see what it says before we move that over to my beer. So, um, hourglass is reading, that means that it's uh, taking the pH, that it's still, it's calculating, it hasn't done, uh, it's not done reading it. When the calculator, when the uh, hourglass kind of goes away, that's when it's, you know, pretty much dialed in. So as you can see, it's six, it's 7.0 right now, um, 7.02, 7.03. Seven point zero three, seven point zero five. Um, we're really close. So I, I mean, I could bring this back to the four point zero. You know, so it's done calculating seven point zero six. Um, that's really, really close. Um, no, it, it, you know, it's actually quite a bit of room for error. Actually, seven point zero eight. It's a little bit more than I would like to see. That's strange. Um, I just kind of shook it a little bit. Okay, 7.07. .07. At any rate, we're kind of... Rinse it back off. So let's see what this... Uh, this quote-unquote pre-soured beer is going to be at. So this was a, uh, this is a beer I have going right now that, um, I pitched, um, Lactobacillus plantarum in. I pitched it probably only, I probably pitched it at two or one. So it's had nine hours in it. Yeah, it's not not moving in the direction I'd like to see it. Um, I guess this is kind of a fail as far as brewing is concerned, but 
Um, pH wise, this beer has not really moved in the direction I'd like to see it. 5.3. Okay. Hasn't moved at all. So, <laughs> I guess at this point, I uh, will just wait and see within another 18 to 20 hours if the pH does swing southwards. Uh, for, for my intensive purposes, I would like to see this beer at 3.3 pH, which is quite sour. Um, as you can see, 5.3, that pretty much means that there's no sourness in the beer, which kind of confirms what I tasted when I tasted the sample. Um, I have not... Uh, I don't really have a backup plan, so <laughs> this is kind of where we're at. But at any rate, so this is how you calibrate um, at least this particular Milwaukee 102 reader pH meter. But other readers should be similar as far as the steps, as far as um, uh, taking the solution, the pH solution, taking taking a reading and we'll let's confirm right now this is just kind of I'm just rinsing it it says in the manual that you should have like a a 4.0 rinsing solution and then the measuring solution I don't do that so again just to kind of recap this should end at 4.0 ish yeah, at any rate, um, these things are super handy. They work so much better than strips. I mean, we're nitpicking over, like, really small numbers here. And Actually, let's see here. Okay, it is going down. But we're nitpicking over, like, really minute, like, 4.10 or 4.20, where the pH strips are, like, super inaccurate. I don't trust those things at all. I think this is kind of but, something that you should focus on when you have everything else dialed in. So if you're doing uh, starters, you're, you're rehydrating your yeast, don't just pitch it on top, which can work, but I suggest uh, rehydrating your dry yeast. You're making good yeast starters, you're doing fermentation control, and you can control your mash temperature to a, a certain extent. Um, I think this is the next step. So, yeah. So aside from that little rant, I hope you guys enjoyed the videos, and we'll we'll talk to you later. Bye.